You are watching a recording of the East Longmeadow Resilient Master Plan Visioning Session held Saturday, February 13th, 2021 from 10 a.m. to noon. Please note this recording does not include the breakout rooms held approximately one hour into the meeting. All right, thank you everyone for coming and joining us this morning. Uh, for our visioning session. My name is Bethany Yo. I am the East Long Meadow Planning Director. We are very pleased to welcome everyone who has been involved in the planning efforts within the town for some time now, as well as those of you who are new to the planning and to the topic of a master plan. Um, this is our first virtual community visioning session for the new master plan. Um, just before we get started, I would like to express my gratitude to all of those who volunteered their time and energy to make this event come together smoothly, um, including our master plan steering committee, our uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission staff and engagement consultants with the Barrett Planning Group. We definitely couldn't do this without you. Today's visioning session is about all of you, our community members. Um, you have all chosen, chosen to be a part of the planning process for the vision statement, which will be the foundation of the new town master plan. Your passion of your town, insights, questions, and ideas for the future of East Long Meadow will help us develop a new master plan to be an accurate reflection of the community's needs and goals. So I'll turn it over to our master plan steering committee chair, Connor O'Shea, to say a few words before we start the activities for today. Thanks, Bethany. So as Bethany said, I'm Connor O'Shea, the chair of the master plan committee. And likewise, it's great that we have a number of people that chose to join our meeting this morning and participate and give us your thoughts and feedback of where we are now as the town and really where you'd like to see us go because hopefully this document will help us serve as the the guiding direction on the vision of where where the decisions should go for the next 10 or so years thank you thanks connor um, Mary, would you like to say a couple of words before we start? Sure, thank you very much. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to see so many uh, familiar faces and some that I haven't uh, had the pleasure of meeting yet. Uh, this is a very exciting time <clears throat> for us in the municipal government of East Long Meadow. <clears throat> Excuse me. The ma existing master plan, as you probably know, is dated in 1976. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, we have a lot of enthusiasm about the project. Bethany and Connor have done a terrific job so far with the uh, establishment of the committee and the um, uh, contributions and assistance of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and, and Barrett have been invaluable to date. So <clears throat> I'm most appreciative of the fact that you're taking your time on a Saturday morning. Uh, it's for the benefit of the future of our community. And uh, I just wanna say thank you to all of you. <clears throat> we will evaluate all of the input <clears throat> and um, try to move our town forward in a most uh, agreeable fashion. So thank you again and good luck this morning. I hope you enjoy the process. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mary. And now I'm just going to let PVPC say a couple of words and introduce themselves before we begin. And then I will follow with an explanation of who our planning group is. Thanks, Iona. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Ken Komia. I'm um, one of the project managers here for the uh, East Long Meadow Resilient Master Plan, um, and, along with Catherine Ratte, who serves as also um, co-project manager. And we have here a group also from PVPC um, on the call that will be either helping facilitate some of our residents um, conversations with you all, as well as um, participants in, in the drafting process of this plan. Um, and I'd also like to take this second to, inch, um, to also welcome Dunya Nuf, um, who is um, our international fellow who will be starting a fellowship with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission in um, Tuesday and she um, hails from Agadir, Morocco and um, she is also an urban planner. So um, it'll be interesting to um, have her and hear her thoughts about engagement here in America and, um, and then also learn from her as well. So we can at PVPC take advantage of that exchange. Um, 
but um, yes, welcome. And um, we look forward to engaging with you in these next couple of months as we um, put together a, a master plan for the community. And I'll just add my, uh, my, my gratitude to all of you for being here. It's, it's wonderful to have almost 60 people on a Saturday morning. So thank you so much for being here. The master plan is your plan for the future and we're just thrilled to have you. And you'll have our contact information at the end of this meeting and please stay in touch. Feel free to contact us with any suggestions and ideas that you have. And thank you so much. Thanks very much, Catherine and Ken. Um, so just echoing the uh, amazing and many thanks for all of you for being here um, on a Saturday and giving us uh, your time. This is going to be very critical uh, for Isong Meadow going forward. Um, the master, uh, the resilient master plan is going to be a guiding document for the next 10 to 20 years. And because of that, we need to hear from all of you and everything that you have to say is very important. And we look forward to engaging today and having some fun. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to share my screen with you all. So just give me one moment here. Okay. So welcome, welcome. Um, as uh, you know, as we all know, we're here to participate in the visioning session for the East Long Meadow Resilient Master Plan. Um, we are, um, as, as Mary had explained before, uh, East Long Meadow has not had a master plan since 1976. And then before that, uh, it was 1960. So um, it has been quite some time since, <laughs> since East Long Meadow has done some um, master planning and some visioning, and we're excited to kickstart that today. Um, I think 45 years is definitely a solid time frame to, <laughs> to start this again. Um, so I just wanted to at, um, introduce the team briefly uh, before we begin. Um, you met Ken and Catherine this morning and myself, I'm Fiona Coughlin, I'm with Barrett Planning Group and my colleague Alexis is also on this call. We'll be handling the engagement for the master plan um, throughout this process. And also uh, we have our content specialists, um, some content specialists on the call today. Um, who will be drafting the plan, doing all of the data gathering and analysis and presenting the beautiful final product um, for you all. So also um, wanted to uh, show everybody who the who your lovely uh, master plan committee is. Um, Con Connor has introduced himself this morning, but we also have Pamela and George, Tim. Gordon, Joe, and Mary Beth, who are, have been all meeting regularly and providing critical feedback um, for this process and really working closely with us and the PVPC team to make sure that we are covering all of our bases and making sure that East Long Meadow is on the right track going forward. And this plan is um, as um, engaged and as current and as amazing as it can be. And also a big thank you to Bethany, who um, is the town uh, director of the Planning Community Development Department and has been um, also helping us substantially in this effort. So just giving you all an, uh, a brief overview of what we are going to be doing today. Um, welcome and introductions, obviously, and then we are moving on to our uh, main presentation. We'll go over what a uh, master plan is, um, what has already been done, because East Long Meadow has done uh, a good amount of work prior to this master plan. Um, that we wanted to highlight for you all. Um, we're going to do a polling exercise uh, and then we are going to just review what visioning is um, and kind of what and you know a recap of, of, of like why we are here today and then go over some fun facts and some um, some stats for you. From there we are going to break into our breakout groups where we will be talking about strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats in East Long Meadow um, and having kind of a um, you know, interpersonal discussion, some brainstorming, and just um, talking about uh, those kind of key points. And then we will recap and then go over ways to continue staying engaged in this process because it doesn't end here. We need to keep hearing from you folks and we need you to spread the word and provide as much feedback as possible to make sure that we are meeting the needs of Yisong Meadow accurately in this plan and, um, do, and, and doing everything that we need to do um, correctly. So. 
So what is a master plan? Okay, so we'll start start with the, the basic breakdown. So the a master plan is really, uh, it's a blueprint for your future. It outlines what the, uh, um, it gives a background for decision making for the next 10 to 20 years, as I mentioned, it, um, it really gui it guides things like um, capital improvements and budgeting and uh, zoning and land use decisions, and really is kind of like a basic framework. Um, it outlines, you know, the long term vision that we establish here today through our vision statement and how we're going to um, achieve that vision. Uh, and it also um, is it's a dynamic document. So, you know, once once it's drafted and the final product is created, it, it's subject to ongoing reviews and con, um, convening of the master plan implementation committee who will continue to review it for relevance and making sure that it's up to date and current and meeting the needs of the town. Um, a master plan is is not required by uh, the Commonwealth, but um, it, do, it the makeup of the plan is guided by Massachusetts General Law Chapter 41. Um, so it has certain sections, um, which I'll go over in the next slide, that must be included. Um, and so how we are approaching this is there's the, our content specialists, as I mentioned before, will be drafting those sections um, in accordance with that legal framework outlined um, outlined in the general laws. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate that, you know, a master plan really is like a policy document and um, really designed for um, decision making. Um, it's not a zoning by law. It's not a capital improvement program and budget. It's, it's not subdivision regulations. It's, it really is um, a guide and really consider it as a kind of like your blueprint and your map going forward and kind of a constant reference point. <clears throat> okay. So, so these are the primary elements of a master plan. Um, it, they, uh, every master plan contains uh, goals, a land use element, an element focused on housing, economic development, cultural and historical resources, natural resources, open space and recreation, transportation, facilities, services and energy, and implementation. Um, Esong Meadow is taking an added step and including climate adaptation and sustainability um, in their master plan, um, because it's uh, obviously a very, very important topic and will be a con of continuing relevance throughout the next 10 years, 10 to 20 years, as we all know. Um, so these are basic, the basic um, kind of core benchmarks that are in each, um, each master plan. So how does the master plan get compiled? Okay, so the process of that is basically, you know, we will review, you know, the, the numbers, the stats, data trends, and look at how that information can, tells us, you know, what, what are the challenges that Esong Meadow is facing? What are um, the particular issues and needs that need to be addressed in this plan based on that, that hard data? And then from there, the, and, and most importantly, we move on to kind of that observational anecdotal data that's provided by you, the public, and that really kind of refines and solidifies this process. So we will take your input from today and take your input that you'll provide um, throughout the master planning um, engagement process and in the implementation workshop. And um, from there, we will, um, uh, we will uh, distill what you have told us and um, converse with the committee and then formulate uh, goals and a final vision statement um, that will um, that, that will guide this this master plan and uh, throughout the next 10 years. Um, and then from once we establish the goals and the vision statement with uh, your critical input, we will develop strategies to achieve those goals and make sure that those strategies are implemented, which is Definitely one of the most critical parts of a master plan is making sure that, you know, it's a living document and it doesn't sit on the shelf and it's um, implemented throughout and uh, in accordance with, with the way that, that it sh it, you all want to be and uh, as it should be. Um, so it's, it's speaking of in implementation, so the uh, master plan, again, as we discussed, it's, it's really like a policy guidance document. It's not, um, it's, it's not a legal document in itself, even though it is uh, Massachusetts general law dictates the, the framework of that document. It's not itself a, a legal document. Um, 
the town's um, legislative and executive bodies will use this use this master plan in their major decision making um, as a gui kind of guiding light and and as a refresher for what are what are the needs and challenges East Long Meadow is facing and how can we implement the strategies put forth to make sure that we're addressing those needs and using that as when um, when uh, regularly meeting and making major decisions. Um, so, you know, as I as I mentioned, the like town town council and all, and other uh, major bodies will will have to rely heavily on this master plan going forward. Um, so, again, we can't cannot emphasize this enough how important it is to get your feedback, especially during the breakout room set breakout room sessions, and making sure that um, you tell us you know what's working and what's not. Okay. So, as I mentioned before, Isong Meadow, you know, this, I, yes, it's been quite some time since you've had a master plan, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that things haven't been done in the interim, right? Um, Isong Meadow has, has done a good amount of work, especially within uh, the last few years. There was a community development plan drafted in 2003, a hazard mitigation plan in 2016. Uh, the open space and recreation plan was recently updated in 2019. And there was also a um, vulnerability and resilience building workshop in 2019. So there's been continuous efforts and planning put into place. Um, it's it's just been spaced out and I think and the master plan needs to come together and kind of marry all of this information and make making sure that those documents also don't sit on the shelf and that they are considered when we are formulating this this plan. So now I'm going to um, have a little oops, sorry about that have a quick polling exercise to kind of gauge what folks are thinking. Um, and what folks want to prioritize. Um, so I have about four questions here for you. Um, and I just wanted to say that we are going to pause when going over the results. So for those on the phone who want to provide feedback, they have the opportunity to do so um, because it, you cannot participate in the polls on the phone, but um, we will pause and we can uh, converse uh, about, uh, uh, about your thoughts. So um, Fiona, can I just can I just uh, interject just to uh, let people know if you have any questions about the poll um, in the chat, I will be writing the question um, and hit it, you know, submitting it so you can all see it. And if you have any questions about the particular poll uh, question that we're asking, feel free to put it in the chat as well. And we'll try to respond to you there or read it out loud if that is uh, if something that we think everyone would benefit from hearing. <clears throat> Awesome. Thanks, Alexis. Yeah, mm -hmm. feel free to let me know um, if I'm missing anything in the chat. And okay, so the first question is Isong Meadows MVP report includes the recommendation become a Massachusetts Department of Energy Resources certified green community. Do you support this recommendation? So before I launch the poll, I just wanted to provide a little bit of background about what what that means. So Becoming a certified green community includes allowing research and development related to renewable energy, um, committing to reduce the town's municipal energy use by 20% over the next five years, which is a very ambitious and exciting goal, um, adopting a, a fuel efficient vehicle policy and um, an energy. I would say yes, we strategy. support this. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, so I am just going to uh, launch this poll for the other folks to provide their feedback. If you give me one moment. And you should see the poll in front of you. All right, it looks like. All right, so it's for the most part, most folks on the call agree. Um, yes, 
they do think that the um, MVP, uh, that this, this record, they support this recommendation and they think that um, becoming a Massachusetts Department of Energy Resources Certified Green Community is something that they want to see in this master plan. So, um, Fiona, can I pause? Because there is an important question in the chat. Um, yes. <clears throat> Uh, someone asked about um, uh, if there is a cost to support this recommendation. And um, so Catherine responded um, with some additional information that communities that are certified as green communities receive funding from the state to reduce municipal energy use in, in buildings. So um, Catherine, and, I'm not sure. Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. Alexis, I'll just elaborate a little bit. So the okay. Commonwealth the Commonwealth provides funding to the regional planning agencies, such as the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, to support our member municipalities who choose to become certified as a green community. So you get um, technical assistance and support from the staff. And then once you're certified, you receive an initial designation grant to implement some of the recommendations. And if you, if you expend that designation grant, you can apply for competitive grants. So some of the communities in our region have received over a million dollars um, in successful grants from the Commonwealth to continue to reduce their municipal energy use and are saving their um, residents uh, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars each year in reduced energy costs. Thank you, Thanks. Catherine. Excellent. Any other questions, Alexis? Uh, nope, that was it. All righty. Does anybody else have anything that they want to add? before I move on to the next question. So um, do you want me to share the results? I don't know that. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm sorry, there so, we go. go. I'm so sorry people, about that. That's fine. So now people will see those awesome. results. Awesome. Great, okay. So. So the next question that we have for you is, um, do you think Isong Meadow functions well as a bedroom community AKA a commuter town, or would you like to see more local job opportunities? So let me set that up for you all and launch that poll. These are flying in. So as of right now, Fiona, I don't see any, ooh, am I, no, I'm not muted. Um, I don't see anything in the chat relating to this. Um, awesome. Thanks, Alexis. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to end this poll. Wow, this, this one was uh, pretty split here. Okay, sharing those results now. So 37% uh, of folks um, thought that you know, East Long Meadow is functioning well now. 47% uh, want more options and a couple of folks are unsure. So this is definitely um, a very interesting question, and as, and um, so um, yeah, go ahead. Some things did pop up in the chat. Just um, uh, someone just said they're not sure why it's an either or, uh, and someone said not sure what this means. Does this mean more development? And um, I guess that that that's a good question. I think it, yeah, having more it, it would require that there be more local job opportunities, which. It can, that can manifest in different ways, but um, it's not like a direct jump to that. I don't know if anyone from PVPC also wants to kind of chime in about what that would mean in order to uh, shift away from being a commuter town to a town where, where there are more job opportunities locally. Yeah, thanks. Uh, well, you know, yeah, oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the comments. And I think, I think you're, you're, you know, the, the advice to reframe the question is helpful and definitely you can be both and um, if that if that's the wish of the community. So yes, thank you for your comments. All righty, awesome. So yeah, those are those are great questions. And I know that, yeah, sometimes the term bedroom community in, in our planning world, you know, we use it a lot, but it doesn't, you know, it really it really means kind of if you're coming coming into town and, and uh, you know, you you leave Lee Song Meadow and then you come back to that kind of that's kind of the mentality and um, 
you know, some places that definitely does, uh, you know, that that is uh, a common, that's common practice really in a lot of communities in the Commonwealth, but um, we just wanted to pose this question to kind of gauge interest to see, you know, kind of bringing more, um, yeah, local opportunities for folks, you know, they can live, work and play in East Long Meadow um, and kind of keep and, and, and support your, um, your local economy and, and kind of grow uh, um, and, and grow local opportunities. I know that the, with the proximity to, um, with, to, to Springfield, um, from looking at our data, we have, we, we know that there is a lot of people who are, you know, living in Song Meadow and working in Springfield. So, um, you know, it, it, it was um, a very interesting question posed uh, by one of our committee members, um, and I'm glad we asked it because it was very telling. So I am going to um, jump to the next poll question now. There's no other questions. Alrighty. So, so can you can you tell us what percentage of East Long Meadow residents leave town to go to work every day? Give me one moment. I think I actually do have the actual number. I just have to dig through it here. Russ, we have that data and certainly can share it. Go ahead, George. Yeah, I just want to jump in for a second. Um, what we saw from the data that was presented from PVPC is that a lot of the jobs in East Long Meadow are being filled by people from Springfield and people in East Long Meadow are going elsewhere to work. So what we could be talking about is a shift in the type of employment, not necessarily the amount of employment in East Long Meadow. Mm. Um, a lot of the employment right now is in relatively lower paying jobs. Uh, the people in East Long Meadow um, tend to go to places like Bay State uh, medical to do their work, but we're also seeing uh, a lot of medical uh, development in town, and those are higher paying jobs. So that's the kind of shift that this would imply in my mind. Excellent. Thanks, George. Yeah, that's great context to give. All righty. Okay, so um, if we're all set, we're going to ask the third question now. So do you want to see improved recreation space in town? So an example uh, that was given when we were kind of formulating these questions was, uh, uh, were, um, you know, improvements to, to ball fields and those kind of specific um, uh, facilities for sports play and uh, improvements to Heritage Park. So I'm going to launch that one now. Oh, I'm sorry. One second. Oops. All righty. Give people a few moments to answer. Hi, Fiona. I have a quick question, if I'm allowed to. Yes, I, sure. Go ahead. I, I didn't, I, I'm sorry, uh, I logged on a little late. Um, but during the last year or something, I want to say it was during the summer, maybe it was the early fall, a survey had gone around uh, that asked some similar questions. And I was wondering if this was already covered before I logged on, I apologize. But I was wondering if any of those survey questions uh, are related to what we're discussing this morning? That's a fantastic question because yes, there was a, um, a survey circulated um, gauging you know, interest and curiosity about the master plan. Um, and there was similar questions. We have that data and we have been looking at it and incorporating it into, um, into, our, um, uh, into our analysis and when going forward. And I have a copy of those results here. Um, I just wanted to make sure from because the date that I have from that um, is, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a little dated. So we just wanted to make sure that we are kind of keeping current and that mm -hmm. these priorities are, are still the same and people, are, um, you know, are, people are in agreement. Um, and Fiona, yes, thank you. Um, yeah. and, and thanks, Glenn, for the question. So last year, the, the town um, requested assistance from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to do the housing chapter of the master plan. So it was um, we, the town wasn't sure they were going to be funded for the full master plan. So thinking strategically, they they got started on the housing chapter and that survey helped inform the housing chapter. And so since we since the town had already done a big comprehensive survey, we decided to do a survey on implementation for this master planning process. So there's going to be another townwide survey in May 
to guide once we have all the data to really hone in on the recommendations. Oftentimes the surveys are to, to identify the issues, but in this case, um, it's gonna be, I think it'll be cool because East Long Meadow, you know, gets to have everybody weighing in on the recommendations. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Awesome, thanks Glenn, thanks Catherine. Good question. All right, so I'm going to end this poll now. Um, this was a runaway, no surprise there. <laughs> I guess agreed um, that they want to see improved recreation space in town. Oh, Fiona, your audio is getting a little wonky. Is anyone, am I the only one having a hard time hearing Fiona or? Can you hear me? Uh, same for me. Okay, so now, oh. now I can Fiona, um, but if, uh, once once you shared the poll results, I think if you could probably just repeat recapping of the poll results, that would be sure. Can you it all is you can hear me now? Okay. Yes. Yep. Yep. All yep. right. Sorry about that, everybody. So, um, thanks for bringing that to my attention, Alexis. Uh, so, eighty-two percent of folks uh, did agree. Uh, no surprise there that they wanted improved recreation space in town. Um, so, and I just wanted to give uh, folks one last chance to to weigh in if they have any last thoughts before launching the final question. So if there's oh, no so Fiona, someone made a good point. Um, recreation space that is disability friendly. So that was brought up in the in the chat. Um, Excellent. Yes. Yep. Excellent. We'll love these Thank comments. you so keep much. It, for that. Yep. Keep them coming in the chat, as Catherine said in the chat. Thank you. And one of the awesome. ones that was mentioned in the chat too, asking like if the dog park was considered recreation space, and that would generally be a yes. Awesome. Thanks, Connor. Great. All righty. So, and last but not least, we have. Um, uh, question relating to the rail trail. So would you like to see an expansion of the Redstone Rail Trail? So I'm going to launch that now. Oh, wow. the last few trickle in there. All righty, so another runaway. <laughs> um, everybody seems to be pretty much in agreement that uh, they want to see an expansion of the rail trail, um, a gorgeous rail trail, might, might I add, from, from what I have seen. Uh, so awesome, great. So thank you everybody. Does so, anybody have any last minute questions or comments before we move on? Let me just check the chat to see if there's uh, anything. Um, uh, so so yeah, 86% said yes, 8% no, 6% oh, unsure, just for those on the, the call. Uh, the, uh, the other comments I saw, uh, expansion of the rail trail that includes native plantings rather than clear cutting would be good. That's a, that's a great point. Okay, sure. Yeah, let me just make a note of that. Awesome. So we'll be saving the chat. So all of these, uh, you know, wonderful detailed bits of feedback will won't be uh, forgotten. Thanks, Alexis. Great. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody for participating. Um, so, so, you know, we've looked at, so we've looked at what, um, you know, we've evaluated uh, what, what the master plan is. We have looked at what East Long Meadow has done already, um, and kind of gauged interest and, and understanding and and, and well, what people think are priorities and needs during public sessions. Very briefly, right? So, so what, what audio is getting a little wonky? Okay, uh, one uh, one moment. Sorry about that. I think that there's something with my headphones, <laughs> which I will switch. Um, so, so as I was saying before, um, we've discussed what a master plan is. We have kind of gone over what what it entails and how it's um, going to be implemented and the process involved in compiling it. We have um, we've kind of gauged uh, your understanding and interest of what you want to see going forward through our polling questions, and we've talked about you know what's East Long Meadow done. Um, so from there, you know, we now we need to take all of this information and and create a vision statement um, from it. So, 
so what's visioning and why is it important? So it's really is a critical component of this master plan process, hence why we're having um, a specific session dedicated to it. Um, it ties together, you know, what's been done and what, what needs to be done. Um, it's an opportunity for participation, of course, on uh, by the community and by staff and uh, volunteers and all of those kind of players and uh, important people that make East Long Meadow so great. Um, and it provides uh, kind of a cohesive, uh, agreed upon statement that, that the community can own and really like establish a, a shared sense of purpose. Um, so, uh, you know, it, and, and obviously um, we, we will use this information that we've gathered today to, to create a vision statement and also it, it but we won't land on a, a final statement at, at this meeting. Um, we will um, go over all of our information and, um, and review and discuss with the committee and hopefully craft um, an amazing final statement for you all um, that really hits the nail on the head. Um, so, so just giving um, a little bit, uh, talking about data and talking about kind of the balance between statistical data and like the data that we're gathering from this very important visioning session, um, we wanted to just kind of show you uh, a, a snapshot of what the uh, data that PVPC has gathered thus far. Um, and I believe Glenn had asked the question, the great question earlier uh, about um, the percentage of um, East, Long Meadows, East Long Meadow workers, um, you know, uh, living in Springfield and vice versa, um, which we'll be following up with. But, um, but here we can see that, um, we can see, you know, as I mentioned, uh, most East Long Meadow workers uh, live in Springfield and most East Long Meadow residents also work in Springfield. Um, the majority of East Long Meadow's um, worker pool it, it specializes in manufacturing and then uh, just 23% uh, and then just below is healthcare, social assistance, and then retail trade. Um, East Long Meadow's tax base, like no surprise here, uh, is, you know, primarily um, composed of uh, residential taxes, 82%, uh, and then there's 9% of com um, uh, commercial taxes, 5% uh, industrial, 4% commercial property. Um, so, and, and then, you know, some uh, population trends that we of note are that uh, East Long Meadow senior population had grown 3% from 2010 to 2019, which was the largest uh, age bracket jump that we saw. Um, the population is projected to grow by about 1,400 folks between 2020 and 2024, which um, which is a st steady growth. Um, and also the uh, mo majority of East Long Meadows um, housing stock, their single unit detached homes, almost 90%. Um, again, this is definitely in line with a lot of things, uh, a lot of trends that we see in, in the area. Um, most units are, you know, 60 plus years old, but there is definitely, comparatively speaking, a lot of newer units that are being uh, developed when compared to surrounding surrounding municipalities. Um, lastly, East Long Meadows uh, median household income was about um, $87,000 in 2019. That was the most current number that we had. Um, so just, these are just some snapshots for you, uh, just kind of the kind of key data points that we te um, teased out. Um, and we will, and in the chapters, of the final master plan, we go into detail about, uh, you know, elaborate on this information and explain and, and talk about um, how these trends and this data will impact East, East Long Meadows future. Does anybody have any questions about any information on this slide before I move forward? See some things in the chat. Sure. Uh, just a comment about, um, the projected growth seeming slow compared to the number of houses uh, that that this person sees being built, and you know that's mm -hmm. it. The, the I, I can't recall when these projections were made. If it's um, but you know it's it's an evolving, moving target, I suppose. But that's that's interesting feedback. Um, and then let's see. Um, and then with regard to the housing, somebody commented that East Long Meadow has a large disability community uh, increasing and this is you know, impacting housing needs. So that's something that needs to be considered, especially with the housing element. Awesome, great. Thank you so much for, uh, for those comments. Um, really, really important. And definitely the disability, disability community needs to be considered going forward and um, will be um, a, a very, very important part of this master plan process. So thank you very much. And 
a quick note that these projection numbers, yes, they are a moving target. Alex, you are you're right, and um, these are kind of the post the, the most current figures available from the state data center. Um, but you know, it, you would not, uh, you know, they're not like a final number by any by any means. It's it's projections really. So um, so just wanted to make the distinction. Um, and thank you everybody for uh for your feedback. Great questions. So now, okay, we've talked about numbers. I'm young. Now, Fiona. Something. Yes. Okay. Can you everybody hear me? Okay. Hello. Uh, very choppy for me. Okay. One moment. Oh, Bethany, thank you for linking that in the, um, the, the chat. Just in case anyone hasn't seen that, um, Bethany linked to the master plan webpage um, in the chat, which is definitely a great thing to bookmark because it has a lot of the documents that have been mentioned. Sorry, everybody. Can you hear me now? Hopefully we'll have no more <laughs> issues. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, apologies again for that. Um, so, you know, we've talked about numbers. Great. Now I'm yawning, right? I'm falling asleep. Come on, let's go. Uh, we, let's talk about something more fun. So I, uh, so we as collectively as a group, we uh, asked the committee and um, to provide us with some fun facts about East Long Meadow. So these are some of the fun facts that we came up with. Um, the Ripley's Believe It or Not uh, ad, daily cartoon ad was definitely uh, very, very cool. Something that was brought to my attention by a couple of people. Um, and also I was pretty blown away by the fact that the person who, in, who created the three point line um, in basketball is from East Long Meadow. So, these are just some kind of fun facts and cool things to know about uh, about your town and what makes it unique. Um, so now it's time for our SWOT exercise. So our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So from here, I'm going to sort you all into uh, breakout rooms and you will have, uh, you'll be, uh, talking uh, about uh, various uh, various strengths and weaknesses with a discussion leader. Um, and then we will be filling out an like, online uh, vision board, if you will, at the same time. So all of your information and the talking points will be uh, updated in real time for you right before your eyes. So if you just give me a couple of minutes to sort you into your specific groups, and then we can begin our chat. So in a minute, something will pop on your screen asking you to like accept an invite to a breakout room. Um, and then in each breakout room, there will be um, somebody from PVPC and also, um, yeah, there'll be somebody from PVPC in each breakout group and someone will be facilitating the discussion um, uh, and someone will be typing. And as Fiona said, the notes will be live on the screen for you to see in case I'll be typing in my group. So if you see a, a mistake in, in, as I type, please, please let me know. Um, 
Mm. Listen, it's still early on a Saturday. I think we can forgive any typos. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It'll make us a judgment-free zone, Alexis. I love it. <laughs> The other thing I'll say is when we move out of the breakout groups, it might seem like there's a lag. Just just don't sign off because we'll be reconvening and the uh, group facilitators will kind of be sharing their primary takeaways. So um, just, just bear with us. So you'll be moved into a group, chit chat. Based on the number of participants, I assume there'll probably be around 10 people per group, which is I think perfect because uh, it's not too big, not too little. People are usually happy to chat and somewhat smaller. Uh, groups. Oh, I love Amy's comment um, about a Amy had uh, added something in the chat about East Long Meadow being a judgment free zone becoming part of the vision statement. So um, I love that. And that is, you know, just to reiterate that, uh, and I had mentioned this in the chat, and I know Fiona said it, you're not going to walk out of the meeting today with a vision statement. Uh, we take these notes and feedback and distill them. And then um, the, it's actually the committee's work. Uh, we'll be presenting them with a draft and they will get to tweak it and fine tune it. And then um, it kind of shapes the, the plan. At this time, attendees were assigned to breakout groups. These smaller group conversations lasted approximately one hour. Upon reconvening, group leaders shared takeaways from their discussions. Hope it was a good discussion. We learned a lot. <clears throat> Wonderful. Excellent. Okay, so I think we're waiting on <clears throat> just one more group. Then we can go over what we talked about. Oh, there they are. Okay. All righty. So it looks like everybody's back now. Um, so I just wanted to take this time to just um, have the discussion leaders kind of give us all a, a quick, you know, three minute summary of the main things that you discussed and feel free to share your screen if you'd like if you want to show your your online vision board you definitely can um and i think we'll start with group one um connor did you want to uh summarize the kind of main takeaways for us sure. Connor, do you want me to share that the padlet yeah if you wouldn't mind i don't have it up on my yeah. screen there and oh wow all right so we kind of had a a wide array of of topics here and kind of a central theme was that they all kind of blended through each of the different categories so some things that were strengths could also be considered opportunities some things that were weaknesses could be opportunities in the future um, some of the stuff was that strengths that were in a pretty good proximity to various things in the area so we're not too far away from the highway, but we're not so close that you get traffic noise and tons of congestion all the time. But we're also not so far away from being able to go to the beach or skiing or New York City, that sort of thing. We also have a lot of very good school system that seems to attract a lot of families, hence us being very high in single family residential homes in town. But there are some other opportunities like there aren't exactly a lot of choices in housing stock given that they are all single family homes and the cost of all of them as well. Honor, please let me know if you, where, how you need me to move around and scroll because. Oh yeah, sure, sorry. I'm just kind of spanning That's okay. some of the categories as we're going. I'll make sure I'm at the top of each one for you. Sure. But... And then, oh, where was I? Uh, let's see some of the potential opportunities as well is kind of going back to our roots as a quarry town and thinking of ways that we could use that to attract either tourism or other opportunities like that um, and then some other threats that there's some potential growing crime problems in the northern end side of town whether it's car thefts and so forth um, other threats include like traffic congestion 
whether it's heading towards Springfield or the various four-way stop signs that we have in town. Um, but then there were some other thoughts too about like historical preservation that like the train station was recently uh, converted into like an ice cream shop near the rail trail, which was a nice uh, reuse of an existing space without it just turning into a dilapidated parcel. Um, there was also some talk about how the town has seen more like medical offices, whether it's like in the industrial part of town. Um, mm -hmm. And they were wondering whether that was deliberately sought out or if it was just something that kind of happened because a state was just continuously growing and building new structures in various areas. Uh, so that was kind of the general synopsis and a lot of those things kind of fell into each of the categories depending on specific parts of it. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thanks Connor. Sounds like a lot was said that your pad yes. looks completely filled. <laughs> I yes. love yeah, it. we had a lot of good feedback. Love yeah. it, great. Um, George, do you wanna just give us a, a quick summary of what you guys discussed? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, thanks. The, I think the number one issue that came up was the high school. Uh, we had a lot of comments on that and the need for a new one. Um, traffic uh, was in all, <laughs> all of the columns uh, that traffic is a major issue in town, um, that uh, it's not just the rotary, it's all over town, heavy traffic, speeding, uh, and traffic increasing because people will go through East Long Meadow to get other places. Um, heavy trucks and things like that. Uh, opportunities, there was a lot around outdoor recreation um, and uh, the, the, the possibility of reuse, of using town land more efficiently for recreation, including uh, hiking and things like that. Um, there was, uh, we, one of the, the, the threats we talked about was um, the divide between the haves and the have-nots in town. Um, everybody sees the half million dollar um, subdivision houses going in, but they forget that we have a lot of older housing on much smaller lots um, that is more affordable. And so we have uh, income disparities between different parts of town that uh, it's particularly evident in, in the schools where you have the rich kids and the not so rich kids. Um, and that's something that could be a threat to the town going forward, uh, plays out in many different ways. Um, one of the strengths that we, we did point out was that we have proactive residents who get together and do things mm. uh, like the dog park and the rail trail and the uh, Veterans Memorial and dozens of other things uh, and that's a strength that the town can can exploit. I mean, I mean, exploit's probably the wrong word, but uh, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. awesome. That kind of sums it up. Uh, it's small community, small community charm, uh, small business support, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of little things. But that those were the, the big themes. Great, thanks, George. Mary Beth. Hi. So a lot. A lot of the same things in, in our group came up, you know, the, the need for um, doing something about the high school. We uh, talked a lot about wanting the, what, what was a real strength was the small town feel and wanting to make sure that as we move forward, the plans we make um, help us to protect that. And we all had a lot of conversation about making sure we had a plan for smart development here in town. We have a lot of um, open areas that are, are privately owned right now, but to keep an eye out on that so that if and when um, places like the golf, the country club or the um, some of the farmland in town becomes available that, you know, we can be more proactive instead of reactive. Um, some of the which kind of came in with some of the threats where, you know, yes, we want to be a green community, but no, we don't want to become overwhelmed with solar farms. Um, and so, you know, being ready to um, have a plan for that. And then we also talked a lot about making sure that the town is open and inviting and um, prepared to address the needs of 
all of the residents. And so that includes um, all ages, all physical abilities, um, and any and any other disabilities that we are, you know, actively working to make sure the town works for everyone. Um, let me see. Uh, awesome. That not sure there was anything that was completely different. Um, oh, I did. I forgot one big thing. We we talked about you know there's an opportunity. That's also somewhat of a. This is the weakness is that the center of town could be. Um, better designed or allocated so that it's easier to use um, and it's more walkable than it is right now. And um, also that we we really could use some kind of community center or community gathering place that's for all ages. Um, and that's really something we're missing here in town, a place for um, people to get together and and um, just share, share their lives and, and have activities and do fun things. Awesome, fantastic, a really interesting points brought up. I like the point about the center of town. Um, all righty, Joe. Yeah. Oh, all right. So uh, we had a great discussion as well. Um, probably a, a good amount of overlap from the other groups, um, which great. probably are not, is not a surprise. But um, just starting with strengths, um, you know, they felt that the location, the schools, uh, recreation does a great job. Um, the fact that we have a single tax rate, that there's a, a very dedicated workforce of, of, of town employees that are, are dedicated to making the town better. Um, celebrations are good, you know, around like the 4th of July, we do the parade and we do fireworks and things like that and the carnival. Um, people felt like it was a really great place to raise a family. Um, that generally the crime rate is very low. Um, so it, it, we, have a, we have a good sense of community here. It's a nice small town feel, um, you know, and, and that was, those were some, some definite strengths. Um, as far as weaknesses, absolutely the, the traffic issue with the rotary is um, cert was certainly brought up. Um, you know, it, we, we do have a great community involvement, but the thought was that, you know, it would be nice to see additional people become more involved in certain aspects of town. Um, let's see, um, allocating more, more land to open space as opposed to seeing uh, housing subdivisions come up. Um, then as far as opportunities, sidewalks, um, that we wanna make sure that we we're, we're more of a um, welcoming community uh, welcoming for those outside of the community as well. Um, you know, the, maybe they were a little more environmentally friendly, um, find ways to be more efficient, um, create maybe less expensive options for utilities and things of that nature. If, if people feel like the costs are, are high, taxes, um, ability to help the elderly. Um, and then let's see, opportunities or threats. Um, some threats were um, overdevelopment, um, some vulnerability to natural disasters, um, permitting new new subdivisions as opposed to um, you know reducing funding to schools. Available threat, uh, available space for development, maybe a threat. Um, town's growing, but I'd like to see um, more ad additional data, which I think is going to be available in within the. Um, the master plan, you know, once we, we can put up all that data, I think it's all on the website. Yep. Um, and just generally overall, I think there was a lot of great feel about the town. It seemed like a lot of people um, were very happy about you know, where the town is and, and where it could go. Um, there's certainly some, some growing pains um, in, in the change of government from going from um, having selectmen to having a town council, but overall it seems like it's a, and it going in a very positive direction, but overall, um, you know, some great things about town and certainly some opportunities for sure. Awesome. Love to hear it. And last but not least, Bethany. Sure. So um, a lot of things have been touched on already. So I think what our group focused on um, mostly is the, the need for and the existing partnerships in town. Um, between our school departments and the other departments in town, as well as some of our smaller organizations like the Norcross, um, just really getting people in touch and forming those connections 
um, to help make some of those ideas like a, a compost system between the restaurants and the high school kids, um, helping to just get those ideas into um, fruition. So um, I could read through all of these, but I'm trying to help out with the time. Um, our group was great and focused on all, all, all the uh, sustainable options. How do we keep these programs um, that are so great for the community going through out um, change in staff and as the kids in the high school grow and leave, um, how do we prevent a brain drain from happening and keep that institutional knowledge within our town and that story of the town um, going and available for everyone to access. Awesome. Thanks, Bethany. I like the use, I like brain drain. It's very cool. Um, All righty. So with that, Oh, shoot. Of course I <laughs> bear with me. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Press the wrong button here. Um, so thank you, everybody, for a very, very engaging and uh, amazing discussion. Sounds like there was a lot of similarities. Um, also, um, some some differences uh, teased out. So we'll definitely be looking at these notes and, and um, in detail as we craft the master plan. So uh, we want you to stay engaged after this. Um, you know, this it, it doesn't stop at the visioning session. Please continue to um, to to provide feedback um there will be the, the project website is up and running um you can scan the qr code which is that funky looking box to the right if you take out your cell phone and you open the camera you can just hold it over um and then it should take you to the project website um, on the website there will be um, an interactive vision board that you can continue to comment on um, as we go through the process um, and also a regular updates will be posted on the town website um, i'm just going to leave up the qr codes for like a real couple seconds so people can scan them um, before i move on okay Okay, and um, I will also provide these links in the chat before um, before we break. So uh, don't worry, I will send those too. So um, we're on social media. So please tag us, hashtag East Long Meadow Master Plan, like us on Facebook. And we also are on TikTok um, because we're very hip. <laughs> um, and th big thanks to our um, intern, Amber, who's running the TikTok um, very well and um, keeping everybody informed and engaging the youth in this um, in this effort and making sure that their voices are heard. Um, can't thank you enough for that. And um, we have an upcoming um, implementation session in May. Please uh, keep uh, your eyes and ears open for that. Um, I will send the link in the chat now. Um, during that session, we will be um, advancing the recommendations from the planning process and um, just kind of gathering more input and support um, and um, devising kind of creative ways to achieve consensus before the final production of the plan. So. Thank you immensely for your time on this Saturday, and we um, really can't um, thank you enough for being here. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to call or email um, Catherine, Ken, Bethany, or Connor. Um, you can also reach out to me, um, Fiona Coffin from Barrett Planning Group. Um, we will um, we will keep everybody updated, and I'm going to share in the chat now um, a link to a Google sheet. So if you are interested in getting regular updates about the master planning process, please fill that sheet out um, and we will send that uh, send that information to you. So just... looks like Connor just put that in the chat, which is excellent. Yeah, Thank you, Thanks, Connor. Connor. Sorry, Fiona. No, that's fine. You're uh, we're on the same wavelength. I love it. <laughs> I think it's view only. However, we can't actually enter anything in it's oh okay i thought that i adjusted that setting but i will be sure to fix that now <laughs> all righty and let me just share those other links with you before we break all right so this is the link to the project website for folks oh um and this is the town website here All righty. Okay, and then um, I'm sorry. One more second. Just dumping that last, throwing all these links at you, rapid fire. I know. <laughs> all right, and then this is the uh, 
a sign up sheet just in case. I know Connor shared it, but just one more time. Yeah, I um, think Connor actually shared um, a, a different Google sheet. So okay. that's why. <laughs> no worries. No worries oh. at all. Um, <laughs> Alrighty, thank you all again so very, very much. We look forward to continuing to uh, chat with you and um, continue the engagement. And we look forward to a, an amazing master plan with all of these key takeaways incorporated. Um, thank you very much and have an excellent rest of your Saturday. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Again, please visit the project website to learn more about the master plan at East Long Meadow NP dot pvpc dot org.